sorry, sorry. Ooh, I'm getting the feedback. Okay, hopefully we won't. Okay, I think I got rid of the feedback in here. All right, um, any questions online um, from anything that we've done so far? Okay. All right, for those that are online, sorry about that. I just was pointing out that I have posted um, an RLC derivation and then there's examples on here. And then um, to summarize, there was a question about what is expected on the exam. Do you need to understand how to do all of the derivation? And the answer was, you don't need to know how to do it from scratch, but you need to understand all the steps involved so that you can use that information. So for example, for the series derivation, VC, was um, the variable in that derivation. And so you wanna use that as far as across the capacitor is why we take the RL, R, the RTH across that capacitor. Um, and then we use that equation to solve any other variables in the circuit after we've gotten that. And we'll go over some of those examples today. All right, any questions though about anything we've covered so far? Any questions about anything upcoming? So, um, Again, online, so you guys didn't hear. So assessments are due today. There's two assessments. And then there'll be the quiz tomorrow. Next week will be, um, well, due next week on Monday will be the exam one group work. And so that's what you're doing instead of a quiz. And so that's to help prepare for the exam, which will be a week from this Wednesday. Yes. Yeah, so it will be in person. It will be in the Engman lab because you can do it on the computer. So we're going to meet in the Engman lab. It will be proctored. Um, if you do need to do it online, you can still do it online. Zoom will be started and you'll be proctored through Zoom. Um, just note if you do do it on Zoom, then you will have an, um, a reach out from either the TA or myself, probably myself to begin with. Um, to make sure that the um, work that you did was your own. So it will be a one-on-one -on -one kind of consultation that will be just more of a verification that the work you did online was correct, was your own. So um, again, meet in the Ingman lab, which is downstairs. Um, and it will be the full class period. If you wanna come a tiny bit early, you're welcome to come a tiny bit early and just go ahead and start that. It will be on Canvas. And then again, bring, um, if, you, if you scan with your phone, bring your phone. There is a scanner in there, but it's a little bit slow. Um, so if you have your own personal device to scan, um, you'll, want, you'll be expected to scan your work after you're done, and then you'll be graded on partial work. I think I saw a couple of hands, yes. Yep, yep, a tablet's allowed. Um, electronic notes, everything's open. Um, the only thing you can't use is a simulator. And um, I had another question, can I even like pre-program, <laughs> you know, some of the equations? You're welcome to pre-program the equations if you want. Um, you just have to understand where everything's coming from. And so that's what's expected is the understanding of what does these mean and what do you do with them? Yes. Yeah, you can use notes online if you, you know, everything is accessible, open book, open notes, open book, just not open neighbor either. So no open neighbor and work should be all your own and no simulators. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Uh -huh. oh. the On which one? Sorry. On this one? Yeah. Um, It, it has a lot of other information on there is why, because I copied this from another course. So I just left it muted. Um, 
but all of the links are in here. So this is a page itself that you're seeing here. So I've just linked in the modules all the pages that you you really need access to. Otherwise, you'll see 2280 material in there and go, what in the world is all this material on there? All right, any other questions? Okay, let's get um, started on, oh, one other thing I did add was this um, test understanding link. So this is great because these refresh every time you wanna do it. So if you wanna go in here, this is from um, the, the book support. And so you can go to chapter six and then these questions will change all the time. So this is a great a way to assess how am I really understanding this material? And so this will be additional ways to get um, support in actual extra problems. So again, every time you do refresh this page, it will rechange these problems. So I put a link on, um, it's just under the RLC circuits, test your knowledge. And then that, just click on that test understanding. And then you can be able to get that each time. And again, they'll refresh every time, which is great because it has a huge database of problems. Sorry, say that louder. It's, um, so his question is where the test will be. It's in the Ingman lab. I will find out the number for Wednesday. I think it's 2110, but I'll go, I'll go look and make sure I know which one it actually is. So I'll bring that on Wednesday and make that announcement. All right, any other questions, comments? Okay. Okay. All right, so this sheet is gonna be the one that's gonna be very useful to make sure you have um, handy. So this is, on the left was the series response um, general equations, and on the right is the parallel response general equations. And then, and then um, the alpha and omega naught, and then the roots S1, S2 equations, and then the damping frequency, which is that omega D. So, so quick summary, I've just really listed them really quickly. So when you look at an RLC circuit, first you're gonna determine series or parallel configuration. Which time frame do you need to use to figure that one out? Correct. So at the final stage is where you're going to determine that. And so remember we're knowing like it's easy to find the initial value and the final value and all of the RLC circuit equation is gonna tell you is how does it transition between that initial and final? But because that final is the end result, that's where we do the derivation. So um, at that end stage is where the derivations, again, that's the understanding of where the derivation came from. And so um, that is the circuit you use to determine series or parallel configuration. Series will be when they're in, there's no extraordinary node in between them and then when you have them in parallel is when you have an extraordinary node between the capacitor and the inductor. So that's how you determine on that one. Then we determine alpha and omega from the equations. From there, compare the alpha and omega naught. Look at this table and see critically damped, over damped, or under damped. Yes. So you do need to look at the significant digits so that if, as you said, like if you round them, they do become a different equation. And so if they're really close, what you're gonna see is that the oscillation, um, so when they're equal is when you have it critically damped and that's when you have an oscillation in between. So it's gonna kind of go up and then oscillate to get to the final one. If they're really close, what you're gonna see is it won't oscillate a lot. It will look more like, um, you know, and depending on which way it's rounding, if it's up or down, it's gonna go up a little bit or down a little bit, depending on, if that makes sense, depending on those curves. So you'll be critically damped, will be the oscillation over damped and then under damped. So it will be closer to look like one of the others. Um, 
but you don't want around <laughs> when you're comparing. So try to keep at least, you know, three significant digits in there. So you're like, okay, then I can see how close they really are. All right, other questions? Yes. Just back to the Yes, you can use an online calculator, um, wh whatever you're used to using. So just be, use the same one. So you're welcome to use an online one if you prefer though. I know they're programmable online ones too. So as I said, because you already have that, then you can pre-program things if you want. All right, other questions? Okay. Um, Okay, so then determining where, where I am, critically damped, under damped, over damped, and then we see we have all the variables in there that are unknown. Usually initial ones, initial conditions. Um, so if we're looking at the series, we're gonna find VC of zero. What time frame do you find that initial zero time? So zero plus is always the one where you find the initial. So make sure you remember that. And then you're gonna find final and then, and then um, whatever other variables. So sometimes the roots, sometimes that damping um, frequency. So whatever else you need to find in there, you'll find that. And then you're gonna plug those variables back into that general form equation and that's your solution. If you need to find a different variable than VC for the series RLC or IL for the parallel, RLC, then you're gonna use that equation and figure out how does that relate to any other variable in the circuit. And we'll go through some of those examples today. Okay. All right, so let's start with this circuit. Um, oh, one question online is, how do you figure out if the RLC circuit is series or parallel? Like if there's a resistor between them on both sides, so that they don't share any nodes. So when you're looking at the series in parallel, it's the branches that are connected to them. So um, if you're in series, it's gonna be one branch. So they'd be like a resistor, inductor, could be another resistor, capacitor, but they're all in series. And then if they're in parallel, then that resistor could be in either of the branches with the capacitor or inductor, um, but it won't, it will still have an extraordinary node connecting between them somewhere. So hopefully through these examples, um, that will make sense for the question online. All right, so looking at this, what's our first step? Okay, series or parallel, what time frame? Final time frame. So we're gonna look at the circuit in the final. So you have to look at the switch and say, where is my final position for this switch? So it looks like it closes at time equals zero. So that would be a closed wire there. And now we're gonna look at where the capacitor and the inductor are. And we see that yes, there's an extraordinary node between those two. So for the question online, say I had a resistor here then that would still be, hopefully you can see that that's still in parallel form. If I had this open instead, and this was open here, hopefully again, you can see these would still be parallel to each other because they're still in the same extraordinary node above them. Because this is an extraordinary node, these would still be in parallel even with that open. But in the final stage, that can sometimes make a difference to have that extra connection off there can make it an extraordinary node and put it in a parallel form. So that's why I'm saying always look at that final stage. So figured out it is parallel. So for parallel, we're gonna use this one over to RC as far as the alpha. So our next step is to find alpha and omega naught. So this was the first step. Second step is alpha. 
and we use the one over 2RC. So we're going to use for this RTH which time frame? Good question. It looks like they're both open circuits here, but is that like always the case, or is it dependent upon whether they're like like an open or a closed circuit at time equal zero? So we're going to use the final time, so not the initial. So final time, and then to an answer your question, it would be um, if you're in parallel, we're going to do it around the inductor. The A and B will be around the inductor. And if we're in series, A and B will be around the capacitor. So for the series, the inductor will become a wire. And for parallel, the C becomes an open. And so we treat them like they've been sitting there a long time for the other component. And then we find A to B around the inductor or capacitor, depending on series or parallel. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so in this case, we are gonna look at this circuit. And again, it's in the final stage. So we are going to treat all the independent sources um, as far as finding the RTH. So I talked today, a voltage source becomes a wire and a current source becomes an open. So this becomes the wire here. This becomes an open. And which element are we looking at? We're in parallel. So what is, where do we put the A and B? Correct. So the inductor is our A and B. And what do we do with the capacitor? Say it louder. It's just going to stay an open here. So. Because I put this at the inductor, it's going to be what will be our RTH here. Correct, three and six in parallel. So as I come up here, I see that these split, which means it's an, a parallel form. So RTH here will be three and six in parallel. And so two ohms will be my value for the RTH here. And the capacitor value is 0 0.5 milli. Make sure, and this was commented on, right, either, um, that you change the, the unit. So milli is 10 to the minus three, micro 10 to the minus six, and for nanos, 10 to the minus nine, to make sure you are converting those K, 10 to the third, mega, 10 to the sixth. So this is gonna be milli, so 10 to the minus three. And alpha here ends up being a 500 nepers per second. Okay, 500 nepers per second. Oh. Okay. And this is just okay. That's not wanting to move. All right, so we have alpha is 500 nepers per second. Omega naught is gonna be one over the square root of L, which is two milli. 
and C, which is uh, 0.5 milli. So that gives a value of omega naught as 1000 radians per second. So what do we have here? We have alpha. Yep, omega naught will be greater than alpha. So what does that mean? We're parallel. Oops, it's up above. There we go. Um, so this is the parallel side. And so we have underdamped, correct? You can see that. So alpha is less than omega naught. So now we need to know IL at infinity, so the final value of IL, the initial value of IL, and then we have omega D, which is that damping frequency. So that means when I'm oscillating, so Underdamped is when I oscillate between the initial and the final value. And so that frequency of oscillation is that omega D, damping frequency. I also need to know, um, I guess that's omega D in here too, um, BL of zero. So the BL is gonna be the time frame at that zero plus. So the initial time I need to know IL. So for the initial, that is right before the switch. So what does that mean for the switch position? It's open, correct? What do I do with the inductor? Correct. And then what do I do with the capacitor? Open, correct. So I can find here this V of C. And then IL will be the other value I need to find for this initial time frame. So what do you notice here with the wire in parallel with six ohms? So it shorts the six ohms. So I basically can ignore this. So there's zero volts across that or zero current going through that, or I can just ignore it. So I see here is going to be or sorry, IL. Correct, minus six amps. There's only the one current. And VC here will be what? Zero, correct. So if you have VC across the wire, there's no voltage across that. So if I highlight all of this, it is all the same color, correct? So it's a short. And so across a short, it's zero volts. You can also see across any wire where the top and the bottom are across that wire, zero volts across a wire. If I was to measure a wire, So there's a current source, but the voltage across is zero because it's shorted by a wire. It doesn't seem to like logically, visually probably make sense for that, but anytime you have a wire across any element, you're shorting it and it's zero volts. So think about a current source is actually a physical like black box device in there. It has other components. So, you know, it can have voltage internally to it to create that current source. But if you put it across the wire, it's gonna short it all out as far as the voltage. Yep. So voltage between here and here is Zero. Does it? I don't know if you redraw it. Does that look better? Yeah. 
Yep, between here and here. If I probe this, that's the same as probing it across this wire here, right? Because they're all the same wire. So you can create a Norton equivalent there. That's okay. A Norton equivalent, if you want to, um, you're going to still find the same thing. There's still going to be um, zero volts at BC. So in that case, you would have. some new voltage and some new, I guess it's an N. And you're still measuring, the VC is still gonna be between here and here, which is a part across the wire portion of it. I don't know, does that help to see it this way too? But going through this branch is zero amps. It's not six amps going through that. Six amps is going through a different branch. So remember extraordinary nodes are where you have multiple elements out of that node. So because of that, you have zero current going through the six ohms. So all of it's going through IL. It's just going through the wire around in the wire. Correct, no current goes to the six ohms. Yep, so physics, physics wise, it's the path of least resistance. Um, if I was to do a voltage loop here, there's no voltage across the wire. And then say I didn't know that this was zero. Mathematically, you could still find it. Say I like, I don't know, some I1, then you're gonna you're gonna have um, the voltage loop is just gonna be a minus I1 times six equals zero. The only way that's true is if I1 is zero. I don't know if these are different ways of helping you visually understand it. Hopefully this is helping me convince you. Um, does that make more sense? So then I1 is zero and then you can't have any voltage across it if your current is zero. That hopefully helping. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so we found under damped and we found the initial right before the switch for IL and VC. Now we need to go to T plus, T plus, T equals zero plus. And then on this one, we're going to have what happens to the switch closed. And what do we do with the inductor and the capacitor in this one? Correct, so here we're gonna replace these with current source and the voltage source at the values from the initial minus, or the zero minus. So this is gonna be minus six amps and this one will be zero volts. So now we wanna find um, the initial values for IL here. So this is gonna be your IL zero, which is still gonna stay the minus six amps. And we need the VL of zero, which is the voltage across here. What will the VL be? Zero volts, right? It's in parallel with zero volts source. So it's gotta be zero volts. So those will be our initial values. Just 
gonna put these down here. All right, so those are our initial values. Now we need to find the final value. So what do we do with the switch? Closed, what do we do with the inductor? And what do we do with the capacitor? Correct. So now we need to find this current IL. And so here I'm going to, I like to do again, node voltage typically. Um, so I'm gonna find this current, call it I1. This current I'll call I2. And then this current is already labeled as 6M. So finding I1, I can do a loop around here. So plus 24 plus three times I1. And that's my loop right there. And then I can solve for I1 will be a minus 24 over three minus eight amps. And I two, I need to know like what Vx is and then I can do Ohm's law. So Vx over minus 24, well, I could go through that. You're gonna find that, anyway. What else do you notice here? So where do you mean your Ohm's law where? It won't be IL though, because IL is the summation of the currents there, right? Because it's an extraordinary node. If it was only in, if the other half of the circuit wasn't there, then yes. Is there only the Correct, it just shorts the resistor there. So now we have zero current there again. Do you have a question or a comment? I just have a comment. Like you could still effectively do that. Like if you just do a source transformation, because you have a resistance and current like series with the voltage source. So then if you just do that, then the inductor would be, then you have two current sources and two different resistors, but the inductor would short both the resistors. So then it would be the sum of the two current sources. Yeah, you could do it that way too. Yeah. Any of them right now, since I already know that there's no current in that I2. And again, that can be by taking that loop again. So it would just be a plus I2 times six equals zero. So I2 has to equal zero. And then if I take a current summation or you could do Norton transformation and then do, um, Notice again that it's shorted in one side and then just to do current sources. Um, if I do a just a current summation, I have I1 going out, IL going out, I2 is zeros, and then I have six going out. So then IL here is a minus six minus I1. And so a minus six minus a minus eight becomes a plus eight for two amps. So this will be my final value. That I need. So I have initial um, IL initial VL initial and I infinity. So I need to now know that Omega D. So omega D is again, the equation. And so it's the omega naught squared minus alpha squared, that's square root of it.
And so that's, um, Omega naught was um, 1,000 squared. And then alpha, I think, was 500 squared. So this gives a value of 866 radians per second. So now I have all of the components here. Um, D1 is going to be IL of 0 is 6 minus 2. So this is going to be 4. L was uh, 0.5 milli, so 1 over 0.5 milli. And VL is 0. Alpha was 500. IL, sorry, this is minus 6, minus 2, minus 8. And then um, IL of zero is a minus six, minus two, all over 866. Gives me a minus 4.62. So IL of T is E to the minus alpha, which was 500 T. D1 is minus eight, cosine 866 T minus 4.62 sine 866 T. Um, plus IL infinity, which was two. And this is valid for T greater than zero. So there's my IL of T expression. Questions on this? Everybody following all the steps? Okay. What if I want to find now a different variable here? So this gives me just the IL of T, but I have, it had asked for the IC of T here. So how do we find that and relate these together? So we look at the final circuit to determine how they're related. So the final circuit is going to have this closed. And I know IL, but I don't know IC. What I do see here is that VL and VC are the same. And I do know the description of VC, not VC, IC. IC equals C, D, V, C, D, T. And with VC and VL equal, I also know that VL is LDI DT. So I can take the differential of this and plug it in here. And that will give me IC. So IC of T is going to be C, and then the differential here will be L, and then this is the second derivative of IL. So I need to differentiate this equation twice, and then multiply it by L and C to get this IC of T. So remember when you have um, a function with t in it and they multiply by each other, you can take the derivative of the first 
one and then keep the second one and then you can add the derivative of derivative of one and then keep the other one and then add the swap of it. So e raised to the minus 500 t. Yeah, these are not moving today. Move this down. <clears throat> All right, so differentiate this IL of T. So it's going to be, you can leave the first one, and then what will be the differentiation? of cosine t it's which one so negative sine 866 t and then you add the derivative of this the first one is going to be minus 500 e to the minus 500 t And then the second half of this, um, so my, okay. So leave the first, take the derivative of the second, take the derivative of the first, left the second one. And then this one is gonna be um, e to the minus 500 t times minus 4.62. And then the derivative of sine, is it negative cosine or cosine? Cosine 866t. And then uh, minus 500 t or 500 e to the minus 500 t sine. It's 66 t and then the two amps just goes to zero when you differentiate that. So then you take the second derivative of this. And I'm going to let you guys do that exercise. <laughs> yes. Say that louder. Yep. Yeah, this is messy. So this is not right. So, so I'm gonna let you guys correct it. And this is where I would like to use an online calculator. So I'm gonna use, go to that, use an online calculator here. Yep. Say what? So it it won't be zero. We use the model of open and closed. So his question is about well, why is IC just not zero? And that's because we only model it with open and closed when it's been sitting there, but that's a final value. We want to know the whole description of what happens between the initial and final for the IC faster. So only at one stage will it be zero. And then it would have an initial value. All 
I say this? So at one instance it is, but it does continue to change over time. And so we wanna know what is the descriptive equation mathematically with it changing over time. So it is at one instance zero, but it does change over time because the switch has been open and closed. So it's going to have a characteristic curve going from the initial time when the switch was open to closed. So it can be just an exponential form, like it will go from this value to this value. So here we saw that uh, VC at zero, or at the, the beginning was zero, but there's, yeah, I don't know how to describe this better. <laughs> Let me think about how to say this better and then I'll come back to it, yes. Wait. This one? Yeah. The IC equals CBB. What are you wanting? All right, so this one's messy. Um, online calculator can actually differentiate that for you. So um, I'll just give you the end equation in a second. So the end equation for this will look like e to the minus 500 t, eight cosine, 866t minus 4.62 sines 866t. So the nice thing is a lot of those terms end up canceling out each other, but it is kind of messy. So go take that to a calculator. <laughs> Yes. I know how to get there using an online calculator or your own calculator. Which one? Photomath. Photomath is a suggestion. Desmos, Wolfgram. Called photo math. That's a nice one. Because, like Wolfgram, you have to pay for the step by step. And some of the others, you have to pay for step by step. So, photo math, he's saying you don't have to pay for step by step. So, yeah, go use one of those. So, know how to use that. Use this as an exercise so you can see that you can get there. All right, questions? You guys ready? Yes. You guys ready to try one on your own? All right, so the next problem on this, go ahead and start working in groups. So first step, series are parallel, figure out alpha and omega naught, determine what form do you have, critically damped, under damped, over damped, and then try to find all the variables and plug it into the general equation. So this will be the problem. And this one, you're going to determine I see a T. All right, are you guys? That is going to. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to put you guys in breakout rooms online just so you can talk without having yourselves heard on our microphone in the room. Uh,
So if you want to take a screenshot of this circuit, feel free to take a screenshot of that circuit. Yeah, it sounds like a monster ball.